Thank you. You can be seated. Wow, good morning. How are you today? Did, was it still dry when you came in? Yeah. Uh, you want me to preach fast so you can get out while it's still dry? <laughs> oh, man. Wow, what a, what a great day and what a great time to be here at Life Church Lafayette. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Steve, and I've been around the Neal family for uh, a lot longer than you. And uh, before John and Brittany were married, I actually helped marry them, but I don't say that if, if you don't like them. I mean, if <laughs> I love John and Brittany. They're great, in my opinion, a great, great young couple leaders who are making a difference. And uh, they love you, Pastor Archie, the leader. He and I now go back, oh, man. 45, maybe 46 years ago, and uh, so I'm more than just somebody to come in. Anybody that you've never, you've never seen me, you have no clue who that old guy is up there. <laughs> hey, I want to be your friend. I am your friend. Uh, I'd love to know your name. Maybe I can introduce myself to you after you can introduce yourself to me, but Happy Memorial Day. I love the time when we as <clears throat> a country honor the men and the women. And in this case, this is about men and women who not only served, but they gave their life for our country. And um, I honor them. And uh, if you have had someone that served or perhaps died in active duty, then we certainly uh, appreciate the fact of how now you're carrying on what, uh, what they stood for. I know we've got a lot of problems in our country, um, but I tell you honestly, I have little to no patience for people who bash our country. Yeah. <coughs> I just do. There's times I like the president, times I don't. There's times I like the governor, times I don't. There's times I like my wife, and sometimes I don't. <laughs> but on our worst day in America, they line up by the millions from other countries to try to get to this nation. And so if you want to burn a flag... Or if you want to bash the country, please allow me to take you to another country where they'll never find you. So I'm thankful for our nation. We get to meet like this right now without threat, without persecution. We get to come together and meet, and so I'm grateful for that. Amen? You're you as well? So... So you've been in this series with um, John and Brittany called Good Pharma. I said in the first service, you know, John can, I guess, you know, there's like the encyclopedia and then there's Johnisms. <laughs> <laughs> I know Brittany was too smart to, to, to say that. She only did it because that's what John said. That's the name of, of this series. But um, and I'm going to carry on with that a little bit differently perhaps, but the whole concept is planting seeds for your future. You know, we're all going to have a future. Um, maybe that's a shorter than some, maybe that's a longer than some, but we're all going to have, you know, we're all going to have some future. And we're, we're preparing for our future today. You know, we don't just wake up someday and be where we want to be um, Sometimes we wake up and we're, we're not sure how we got there, but there was always seeds being planted that got us to, to the future that, that, we ha that we end up with. And so what I'm going to talk about is, is those of you that do know me, you know I travel all over the world and uh, take about 10, sometimes more trips per year to uh, other countries and invest into those countries India, Indonesia, Singapore, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Cuba, uh, Brazil. Next up in a couple of weeks is uh, Mexico. 
And in those places, what I'm doing is what the title of my message is, and that is planting seeds in other people's ground. Not just planting seeds in our ground, not just planting seeds for our future, but planting seeds in other people's grounds. Because here's, here's what I know. I have to work on me, okay? And I get that. Nobody can work on me like I can work on me. But I also think that there is a responsibility been placed upon us to help other people, not just ourselves. And I contend that often I get better when I help you get better. You know, selfishness is, is taught. Nobody, you know, we, we, we learn the my, the me, the that's mine, leave my stuff alone, that's my ball, that's my toy, and, and it's everywhere. And we learn that, and if we're not careful, that becomes our, our, our motive for life. It becomes our, um, the way we operate, and, and we don't think enough about other people. So my part of Good Pharma is, why don't you and I focus and concentrate on how can we plant seeds in other people's ground to help them get better, and in doing so, it makes us better. You see, I don't want to get better just so you can say I'm better. I want to get better so I can serve better, so I can do more, so I can help more, so that I can can take with the you know, what God puts around me and, and I have a responsibility, what can, I, what can I do with that? What can I, how can I use that to help other people? The scriptures that you are using here is, be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Let us not become weary in doing well, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now, in the Passion Translation, I brought up these scriptures and sent them ahead of time that I want to just read to you. I like a little different some things, what they say. Don't allow yourselves to be weary in planting good seeds, for the season of reaping the wonderful harvest you've planted is coming. Take advantage, and this is what I really like about this part. Take advantage of every opportunity to be a blessing to others. How can we, how can we invest into the people that are around us? You know, I love Colossians 127 that says, Christ in us is the hope of glory. And when I look around here today, I think of you. You, Because Christ is in you, you're the hope of this church. John and Brittany are the leaders, and, 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 and from their own individual standpoint, they provide the hope. But, but you're the hope of this church. But the people that are going to come to this church are going to come because you invited them. You influenced them. You helped them. You're the hope of your city. Well, your city can get better because you provide the hope, the Christ in you. You're the hope of the world. And God gives us that responsibility. So what I'm going to do in the remaining hour and a half that we have together this morning. <laughs> no, I, I, next time I come, they'll say, hey, Steve, you got to preach five times. I, I don't know. There's, there's no end to this. Amen, I totally agree with that. Um, what I've done is I have these seven mindsets that, that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you about. It won't take a long time with each and the time that we do have, but seven mindsets that, that helps guide me, even though this is what I do, okay? I'm going to go home this afternoon and, and get ready, got another trip, and then another, and then another, and then another. Besides when I'm on trips, I'm always communicating, doing things with the people around the world. But if I'm not careful, I can lose my bearings. So I say that to to help you to understand, even though this is what I do, I have to be careful to make sure that I stay on the right focused mentality. Or I can 
not do it or I could do it with the wrong attitude. I could do it with the wrong heart, the wrong motives. And so there's seven of these that I'm going to go over with you. Some of them I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit more on. And um, I think the notes are in your app. If not, you can just jot them down. They're, they're not long. But let's, let's look at these and see, is there something we can do that will help us plant seeds in other people's grounds? Mindset number one. All right? Plant seeds in people's ground that can't do anything back for me. Oh, this is a biggie to just jump right out of the gate with. But we can't just do something because we get something. You ever met that person that they want to help you, but then there's like this hook on their help that they not only will scratch your back, they not only want you to scratch their back, they want a massage. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, 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 need, they need a lot. And, you know, quite honestly, I don't need their help. If somebody helps me, I want them to help me just because it was just the right thing to do. And that's what God wants from us. You know, I, 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 I do this. I've done this for years and years and years. I spend a lot of time overseas. And you, if you follow any of my social media on Facebook or Instagram, my, I mean, my youngest son told me in, Facebook is for old people. And I said, <laughs> okay, well, I guess I'm old. I don't know. But, um, you see lots and lots of pictures with me and children. And, and I don't do that to get your attention. I do that for the attention and for the purpose of the kids. The kids love the attention. And I invest in them. And I talk. They can't do anything for me. They can't, they can't help me. They, they can't send me on my next trip. They can't, you know, they're, they're not patting me on the back. But I love it. And, and not because I want my picture, but they love to take a picture with you. And I'm always taking pictures with them and, and high-fiving them and playing with them. And, you know, some, some leaders, that doesn't mean anything to them. You know, I remember a few years ago, I was in Madan, Indonesia, and they asked me if I would speak to the youth group on Saturday night. And I, I didn't have anything already scheduled. I said, well, absolutely. You know, because I just like young people, and I like, I like investing in them. And they help keep me young and help keep me feeling young, by the way. So I said, yeah, and, and I know I, I, I can't, wouldn't name the names of the people, but I have a lot of friends that, that if you ask them, you know, they're, they're this, you know, they're a little above speaking to the youth group. You understand what I'm saying? And, and they, they would say, well, you know, that I, I'm, I'm kind of busy, you know, and they're really not. They're just laying out by the pool at the hotel. <laughs> and I said, yes, and I went. <laughs> And I got there, and there was more than 1,500. And I thought, yeah, you guys that wouldn't want to come here, you wish you were here now. And I do stuff like that. We drill wells in India in September. By the way, I don't know that I've been back here since Life Church Lafayette gave the money, but I dedicated your well. And today, while we're sitting in Lafayette, Indiana, your well that you paid for is giving water to the people of the village of India. Congratulations! Yes! And uh, anyway, in September, we're getting ready to drill and well, or drill and dedicate our 150th well in the villages of India. And we never, had, we never had a dime when we started drilling those wells. Never, ne never. But you know, people say, how much money you got? I said, that's the wrong question. <laughs> how much faith do I have is the right question. And so now, after all these years, here we are getting ready to embark and do Number 150. I don't get anything back from that other than the joy of watching somebody turn that tap on yeah. and fill their bucket with water. 
I do in Mexico. I speak to these. They're called Vida in Rescate, which is their, their, their rescue homes. There's about 280, 290 men and women aged from 13 years old to the mid-60s. They're, it's like an incarceration. They've been on drugs. They've been in gangs. Um, the guy that translates for me is an ex-murderer. You always pray he stays straight, right? <laughs> and they don't give anything back to me. Right now, I'm in the process of raising money. Not for me. I raise the money because I'm going to take it to Mexico, and I'm going to buy a bunch of food for the men and the women. I'm going to buy some new beds. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy some new supplies. I don't get anything out of that. Folks, it's not about what we get. It's about what we give. To help people. So I just have to keep reminding myself, i got to help people. I'm not in this to, to, to scratch your back so you'll scratch my back. I'm in this to find the people that hurt the most, that can't do anything back for me. That's what God wants from you. Mindset number two. This is a big one. Every person I meet or encounter is imperfect. <sighs> that means you, me. Some people think everybody's imperfect with them. Everybody's, every, everybody, just look around you. They're sitting next to you. Everybody's got problems everybody's got problems and guess what their imperfections always seems to come out when you're around <laughs> you don't like what they do you don't like what they said you don't like where they're going you don't like how they look you don't like how they talk you don't like how they smell everybody's imperfect and I have to remind myself that that no matter yeah it <laughs> It gets to you sometimes. I understand that. And we all, you know, some of us have longer fuses than others. You know, I think maybe sometimes we need a, a fuse, trans, trans, whatever you call that, a new fuse. Our, our old fuse has been burned up. But everybody I come in contact with, they got problems. And so I got I to gotta allow for that. That's why I say this. I got to allow. Yes, they're going to do stuff. Yes, they're going to say stuff. But everybody has got problems. You see, we look at people and we think there's a mess. God looks at people and says there is a potential masterpiece. And see, that's the mistake people made with me. I've told you this before. I'm the product of a broken home. I'm the product of an alcoholic father that drank himself to death when he was 48 years old. And that's what people thought about me. That boy will never amount to anything. He'll never do anything. My own father told me the same thing. He's a mess. They may have said that about you. Maybe you've been labeled a mess. But I'm so thankful today because of the grace and the mercy of God. In January, the people that thought I was a mess, this coming January of 2025, I will celebrate 50 years of ministry because God saw something in me. They didn't see anything in me. God saw something. And all I had to do was just say yes. And that's all we have to do. You, you don't know who you're going to meet tomorrow that will be the next great leader. So everybody isn't perfect. Mindset number three, I have to decide if people need helped, hugged, or heard. See, some people need help. They need talk to. 
You know, I mean, we all need, you know, at some point. So they need, they need, they need to hear something. Some people don't need to hear words. They just need to feel some arms. Just, just give them a hug. And some people just don't need words. They don't need arms. They just need you to sit down and open your ears. And that's how you can help them. And so think about that when you encounter people. Okay, all right, let's, let's see what, what needs to happen here. Do they, do they need to be helped? Do they need to say? Do I need to hug? Or do I just need to listen? Mindset number four. Fingerprints of love spent on people never fade away. Oh, I love this. When you, when you give, when you sow love into somebody, when you do something to somebody. Oh, I, I understand. I may not be the one that gets to stand around and wait around and see the thing come to a fruitful end. I, I get that. And I'm okay with that. You know, even if you're a pastor, you don't get to see everything that happens in a person's life. And so I may even say some things today that might help you that, that I, may, I may never get to see that, how that plays out in your life. But here's what I know. Whether they accept it or reject my, my act of love, the fingerprint of that love never fades away. It stays there. It gnaws at them sometimes. And so I, I, don't, I don't worry about, well, am I going to get to see this happen? Or No, I don't, I don't worry about that. I just, I just plant the love and know that it will never fade away. I read a story of a doctor smart guy that was doing a commencement exercise and in the in the middle of his address he said to the graduating seniors he said the greatest need of humans is love so he concluded and he was you know mingling a little bit at the end and Someone walked up to him and they said doctor can I ask you a question he said well sure and they said well, what if I Give this love, and it doesn't work. The doctor said, wow, that's, that's simple. I mean, that, he, he smiled rig big, and he said, just increase the dose. <laughs> There's somebody around you that just needs a little extra dose of love today. Just increase the dose. Maybe it needs to be doubled. Maybe it needs to be tripled. Maybe it needs to be quadrupled. You just increase the dose. It's not gonna. It's not gonna fade away. You may not get to watch it all play out, but please trust me. In 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 my almost fifty years, there's been thousands upon thousands of people that I've invested in that I don't get to see the end of it. But it doesn't matter. It never fades away. Mindset number five. I'm married to the message of hope, not the method by which I deliver it. I'm so concerned that people who bash other people and other churches, I know there's, you know there's lots of churches who not only do they disagree with how some churches do it, I mean they stand up in their pulpit and they talk about how the other church was wrong. And you know what they, why they say it's wrong? Because they don't do it the way they do it. That's called the method. Thank God things change. Thank God we got air conditioning now in our cars. Anybody ever had a car without air conditioning? Now, I don't mean one that you had it, but it got broke. But you just, I mean, <laughs> do I have a witness? <laughs> Thank God we got air. How many of you used to own a car? You had to shift the gears. Now you just go, or now. <laughs> you know. I'm glad that I, I don't have to ride the proverbial boat to China to get to Asia. Now, it still takes a day and a half to get there, 
but it's better in three months. Things change. Listen, listen, listen. This is going to be the little bit of the pastoral coming out in me. This church, what are you, four, almost four years old? Almost five? Almost five? Wow, you're getting old. <laughs> no, hey, I've, I've been here since year one coming. But listen, things change. And it's okay. Take a deep breath. Because here's what I can promise you. There will be something done here you don't like. <laughs> There'll be something done here that you love. Yep. Just, just chill. My wife calls it sometimes I mumble. I said, no, I, I, I don't mumble. You just don't hear well. <laughs> Anybody ever told you mumble? <laughs> you, you, you didn't even mumble your answer to that question. But, hey, listen. Methods change. Songs change. Furniture changes. Lighting changes. You may come in here next week and the walls are purple. I don't know. You may come in here next week and there's tattoos all over the wall. I don't know. Things change, but the message is not changed. Thank God Christ loves us, gave his life for us, saves us by grace, through faith, by the mercy and the love of God, and that message has never changed, but how we deliver it changes, and it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Methods change. The message doesn't. Number six, it takes all of us to help each of us. We're a body. We're a family. Everybody plays a part. Everybody has a role. Every one of you is good at something. You're not all a hand. You're not all a, uh, an ear. You're not all a voice. You're not all a leg. You're not all the eyes. You're not all a kidney. You're not all a lung. You're not all a liver. Everybody has a part to play. And when we all play our part, it takes all of us to reach each of us. And whatever you're good at is what you use to help other people. That's why... I have a great passion for helping people that have come through a divorce. I know what that's like to be the product of a divorced home. As a child, I know what that feels like. I know the rejection that comes with that. But if you were delivered from drugs, who do you think's the best person you could help? Somebody else that needs to be delivered from drugs. If you were an alcoholic, who's the best person you can help? Someone that's coming out of the alcoholism lifestyle. So it takes all of us to reach each of us. And mindset number seven is I have to refuse to die with my last success. Now, you say, well, eventually... One of them is going to be your last success. I get that. I understand that. But my goal is that I'm going to keep pressing and grinding and never settling. You see, after all these years, I see more people fail over success than I see them fail over failures. They get comfortable. They get cocky. They get haughty. Look what I did. Look where I've been. Look what I said. Look what I accomplished. Yeah, you can do great things, but don't settle. Well, we got three services. Well, let's let's get four. We got four. Let's get five. We we okay. We we can we can knock out that wall. We can gain twelve more seats, or maybe we can go that way. We can gain ten. What what can we do to keep investing? 
There's a man that I read after his name is Eric Weinheim, Weinheim Meyer. He was born when he could see, but at the age of 14 years old, he went 100% blind. But he was an ambitious young guy. Had a passion, a desire to make something of his life. And so he prepared, and as the only blind man ever to do it, in 2001, he scaled and climbed Mount Everest, completely blind. And when he made his way back down to the summit, his trainer looked at him and said, Eric, don't let this be your last success. I would have thought, hey, man, give me a break. I'm, a, <laughs> I'm blind. I just climbed Mount Everest. But he had this grind on the inside of him. And he prepared for another feat. And in 2014, he kayaked 277 mile river in the bottom of the Grand Canyon, solo, by himself. <laughs> he now has a movement called No Barriers. Wow, wow, what a great name for a guy like that. And his whole deal is there's something in you that you can do more. And that's my good pharma today. Don't live just for yourself. There's a world outside that wall right there. Maybe this weekend you'll encounter some of those people. Go and plant seeds. Not just in your ground, but in other people's ground. And then I'm going to finish I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to say it to you, then I'm going to ask you one more time. Here's a question. What have you been saying no to that God is saying now? close your eyes I'm going to ask the question one more time and then I'm going to step down what have you been saying no and today God brought me to help say he's saying now. God bless you.